Hi, I'm Laurencio and in this video I'm going to talk about Just Cause. Just Cause, or as some people call it, the Michael Bay Simulator, is awesome. Why do people call it like that? Because destruction and explosions are a home in this game series. In Just Cause, you play as Rico, a guy who can withstand a lot of damage. Seriously, you get fired by army men, there are explosions near you, and Rico can still survive. There is a limit though, when you see that the screen turns grey, you should retreat and leave Rico to regenerate his health. The biggest addition in this series is the wingsuit. If Just Cause 2 was awesome just with the grappling hook, now you can do this. And you can combine the parachute from the previous game to boost yourself with the wingsuit. And I have to praise the wingsuit mechanics. They are the ones that made the game stand out for me. Not only that the wingsuit is a means of travel, but the environment is so beautiful and only roaming around the gigantic maps in the wingsuit is very relaxing. As for the missions, in Just Cause 3 what you will mainly do in the game is clear out cities or military bases and complete challenges. And the formula sounds repetitive, ok it is repetitive on paper and people complained about it, but I had fun. For me the game never felt repetitive, even if on paper it is repetitive. Basically what you will have to do when you get in a city or in a military base that is occupied by the enemy, if you see something red that belongs to this indicator, you destroy it. And after you destroy everything that is shown here, you draw the flag and the city is liberated. And you do this in all of the locations shown on the map. And you do this to free Medici from what looks like if Mario and Stalin had an offspring. And aside of liberating cities, you will also be doing challenges, like wingsuit challenges and various vehicle challenges. And only this add a lot of variety to the gameplay. Also the main story missions are varied too. You get all sorts of different mission objectives in the main story missions. The game isn't all about liberating bases in the same fashion, like many complain. It has a lot of variety, but I do admit that it gets repetitive at some point. In both games, if you don't want to wingsuit your way across the map, you can call drops. And you can customize your drop loadout in multiple ways. You can request cars, bikes, choppers, boats, weapons, and that is pretty cool. Some don't like it because they say it's too gratifying, but I disagree with them. The map is gigantic in both games. Let people have fun. I don't wanna walk or wingsuit kilometers just because I need to manually fetch another vehicle. As for differences, there are some notable ones. The destructive fun is present in both games, and in their core, the games are very similar. But there are some differences too, mostly in presentation. The two games have a different story, obviously, and they are set in different locations. Instead of the beautiful Italian setting in Medici, with its lavanda fields, in Just Cause 4, you are now in South America. The map is bigger and more diverse, I mean, you get more variety in the map. Just Cause 3 had the same climate, while Just Cause 4 has a jungle area, a desert area, a plain area, mountains, it's much more varied. But all of this comes with a price on the PS4, and I'm not talking about what you have to pay for the games. I mean hardware wise. The PS4 isn't the strongest platform, and you can see that with Just Cause 4, when you play the game on a big screen. The resolution is washed out, which means that what you see isn't 1080p, it's I will say 720p, maybe less, but you can see that it's a smaller resolution stretched onto a big screen. Also I don't know why, but some cutscenes look like a PS3 game. And I have a major complaint about Just Cause 4. The water is horrible, and even horrible might be a compliment for it. Sure when swimming it looks passable, even it even if it has no waves, but when you go underwater, there is where the true problem gets more obvious. 
What is this? Why is the water a texture that gets repeated? Why does the underwater of GTA San Andreas that came out in 2004 have more vegetation than a 2019 game? Why does the texture in the water split? Why do reflections look like this? And most importantly, why does the water in Just Cause 4 look like this? If in the previous game it looked like this. In Just Cause 3 you had huge beautiful waves and the boats left trails in the water. Whereas in Just Cause 4, the water is flat, because that's how oceans work in 2019 and the boats leave an ugly trail behind. And the NPCs in Just Cause 4 are stupid. They weren't the brightest in Just Cause 3 either, but in Just Cause 4 they aren't clumsy, they are a threat to themselves. But I can't be mad about this. I mean, seeing random funny glitches always puts a smile on my face. And I have to praise the game that it gets you almost instantly into the game, which is impressive. It takes some time to load at first, but once you are in the menu, you get in the game instantly. Also some differences I've noticed is that Just Cause, Just Cause 3's graphics are sharper, but look more cartoony in comparison to Just Cause 4, but Just Cause 4 looks better, but is washed out on the PS4. So I guess that the best experience you could get from the game is to play it on a capable PC on max settings. But don't worry, if you play it on a PS4, you will still have a lot of fun in the games. Okay, and I said that in Just Cause 3, you liberate cities. What do you do in Just Cause 4? You don't exactly do that in Just Cause 4 anymore. But instead, you take on military bases and then from the map you send out troops to conquer territory. And when capturing military bases, you don't get the objective list like in the previous game. Now there are base specific tasks to do. Whether it is to push some buttons before a timer runs out, or to drive rigged vehicles into water, there are plenty of different objectives when liberating a base. And this specific destructive fun is still on a high level. And you also get challenges, which this time aren't events split by loading times, but rather are events shown on the map. You can mark them and go straight at them. You get wingsuit challenges, speed challenges and other forms of vehicle challenges. You can go straight at them without loading times. You can also use the tethers to solve puzzles and uncover, and uncover ancient mysteries. An addition to Just Cause 4 is the weather system, which is an ironic claim considering the water in the game. They wanted to simulate weather when they didn't get the water right after nailing it in the previous game. Ok, the weather system means that you can encounter tornadoes which suck up stuff and cause explosions, or you get storms and can get struck by lightning, or you get sandstorms. The weather system, at least for me, was just there. I mean, they didn't enhance my experience nor worsen it. The weather was just there. But the water was a big inconvenience for me. I hated the water in Just Cause 4. But no matter the differences between the games, I had fun nonetheless in both games. And I totally recommend you the two games. There is so much to do, so much to see in the games, so many items you can use. You can tether stuff, you can even tether rockets on vehicles or animals. The games are marvelous, just try them out. The destructive fun you get when playing the games is amazing. And it's a unique experience you will want to talk about, for sure. So try them out, you won't regret it. Ok, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section. You will help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and terribly thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.